Growing up, I wasn't afraid of monsters. In fact, if it was fake, imaginary, or made up, I wasn't scared. Kids my age were always scared of the boogeyman, or the monster under your bed, or whatever. Seven-year-old me didn't buy it. I was actually scared of real threats like a criminal breaking into my house, or raccoons with rabies trying to bite me. I was always scared of raccoons for some reason. Always. Aggressive in my small town. But besides threats like that, I was only afraid of things I knew were true or were real. That all changed one summer night when the unexplainable happened. It was late at night, most likely 10 p.m., far later than my bedtime. My parents let me stay up that night and watch a movie with them. It was fun, and it was nice to spend time with my parents all at once. It was the rare time my dad wasn't busy with work. So I was pretty happy and grateful at the time. After the movie, my mom carried me to my bed and tucked me in. I asked her if she could read me a bedtime story, but she said it was already way too late for that. I was already pretty tired either way, so by the time my mom left the room, I was already in a deep sleep. About two to three hours later, I was slowly woken up by a very quiet sound. Tapping. It was barely audible but it has been going on for so long that it slowly woke me up. At first, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was in my head or something outside. It was so quiet that I almost went back to bed, but I didn't. That tapping sound was so quiet, it let me rest, but didn't let me actually fall back asleep. It just barely left me hanging on the edge of being awake and finally going to sleep. The tapping had a pitch that was really soft, yet very sharp. Like someone tapping their fingernails on the wall. It kept on repeating the same rhythm, a tap, a perfect one second pause, then a second tap. It never changed volume. It was still very quiet, just barely audible, but it was there. Eventually, after about 30 minutes of this annoying tapping, I woke up. I mustered the strength to sit up and fully open my eyes to the large open room. I never used a nightlight, so the only thing that provided any form of illumination was streams of light from the moon that came through my window. If you've ever been in a dark room with the moon shining in, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Most of my room was visible from this moonlight. My desk, bathroom, almost everything, except my closet with its door wide open. My closet was the only thing that wasn't affected by the moonlight. It wasn't even supposed to be open, as I liked to keep it shut for organization. But I must have been so tired that night that I just left it wide open. The inside of it, though, was different. It was dark, pitch black, just an empty abyss of darkness. If you shined a light into it, the darkness inside would swallow it up. It took me a while to pinpoint the exact location of the tapping. It wasn't coming from outside like I thought. It was coming from inside. Inside of my room. Inside of that closet. At this point, I was more annoyed than curious of what it was. 
I just wanted it to stop so I could go back to bed. I knew that if I were to make it stop, I would need to see what was causing it. I tried to picture images of what it could be. Maybe one of my toys were left out or a mouse was in my room. That's all I could think. I reached over to my nightstand and looked at my wristwatch. The illuminating digits read 1.32 AM. Tired and getting angry that I wanted to go back to sleep, I gathered the strength to reach up and flip the light switch, which for me was conveniently next to my bed. I gave the knob a flip, but my bedroom light didn't come on. I gave it a second flip back and forth. It still didn't come on. I thought that either the light bulb wasn't working or the power went out. I was pretty sure the power was out because when I tried my lamp light, it didn't turn on either. Even further frustrated, I decided to go to my closet myself and find the source of this annoying sound. Maybe feel around for my flashlight if I could find it along the way. I got out of my bed and searched the shelf for my flashlight. No luck. So I decided to march on over to the dark closet blindly and take a look. Well, at least try to take a look. I stormed over to the closet to put an end to this, but the closer I got, the darkness of the closet never became clear. I was expecting my eyes to adjust as I got closer to it, but the dark void still was impossible to look through. I knew I had to get even closer, perhaps inside the closet, if I wanted the ability to see anything. Then that's when it happened and the tapping stopped. I was at most five feet away before I saw something, a shape, an oval shape barely visible, just barely there. It was white and I couldn't see any detail besides what general shape it could possibly be. By my rough estimate, it was an oval. At first, I was relieved to actually see an object inside of the void. I thought it was my wall at first, and I began to start looking for that tapping sound. But something made me stop. Stop dead where I was after I made at least two steps closer from where I originally saw the shape. I was able to see more details. I saw at least 25% of what it was. The thing I saw in there, it was a face. At first I thought it was anything but that. Perhaps just some clothes hung up or the wall or anything but that. But as I got closer and I squinted my eyes, I saw two black, void, dead eyes staring back at me. I was only able to see half the face, so all I saw was from the eyes up. No mouth, no cheeks. Everything else was just swallowed by the darkness. When I was finished staring at the thing, and I realized my mind wasn't playing a trick on me. My mind pieced together what was happening. There was a man in my closet. After the initial shock of fear, I immediately ran over to my bed and hid under my blanket, shivering in fear. Seven-year-old me had no idea what to do. I was horrified. There was a man in my closet and not just a man, it was a tall man. Someone two times as tall as me. And trust me, back then, I thought I was a tall kid. 
I hid under the covers, not moving. I didn't scream because I thought that thing was going to hear me. Maybe it doesn't know I'm here. Maybe it lost interest. I just didn't know. After what felt like a long pause of me hiding under my bed, I decided to peek out of the cover to see what it was or if it was still there. I wished I didn't. When I peeked my head out, I saw the whole face. The man in my closet stuck his head out so slightly, enough that the light from the moon revealed what it truly was. I couldn't see its body, if it had one, but I saw its face, its horrible, hideous face. Something that haunts me to this day. The face was long, very long, with two bottomless eyes that was missing its pupils. The eyes still looked like they were locked on me. The worst part was the mouth. The mouth had no teeth. It had no gums. It had no tongue. It was nothing. But it was a smile. It was a twisted smile that left the mouth wide open while keeping both corners stretched all the way to the end of the face. It was such a wide smile. It was far beyond what a human could do. The whole face just didn't make sense to the human anatomy. The face looked like a mask made of plastic or porcelain. But it wasn't. I could see from my bed that it was made of skin. Maybe not even human skin, but it was organic and it was alive. The worst part was, the face never moved a bit. It didn't make any breathing sounds. It didn't adjust its wide, terrifying smile. It just stared at me tucked in my bed, trying to take shelter from that thing, telling myself it wasn't real, but we have gotten far past that point by now. I can't tell myself it wasn't real. I was scared, and I wanted to get out. I wanted my mommy, my daddy, someone to make it go away. I immediately jumped out of bed and ran to the door. I tried flipping on the light switch again on my way out, but it was still dead. The lights wouldn't turn on. Once I got to my door, I grabbed the doorknob and turned it. It was locked. I didn't understand. Locked? From inside my room? My door doesn't even lock in that way. How could it be shut like this? I used all my force to get it open, but it wouldn't budge. I began slamming on the door, crying to my parents. I kept screaming while pounding on the door, desperate for anything. I looked back at my closet to see if that thing was still there, and it was. It was still in my closet, staring and I could make out three enormous claws emerging from the closet's black void. They were at least three feet long, and sure enough, sharp enough to go right through me, or whatever it planned to do with them. Seeing the claws made me panic more as I squeezed my eyes shut, and I cried for my parents. For them to help. I was helpless in this situation, and I knew the monster was going to get me. And then, the greatest miracle happened. The door opened. My parents opened the door with ease, causing me to fall to the ground. My mom immediately ran to pick me up and hug me while my dad turned on the lights. I didn't understand how the light switch suddenly worked, and my door that was locked tight a second ago was suddenly unlocked. 
But when my dad flipped on the lights and my mom asked me what was wrong, I pointed to the closet. I looked at where I was pointing, but the face was gone. Every trace of it was gone. All that I saw was my ceiling lights that illuminated the inside. Just my clothes and toys, no face. I wouldn't stop crying in my mom's arms all night. My parents originally thought it was a burglar that broke in and tried to take me or something. They did a full search of my closet and my room and the entire house, but my parents found nothing. I knew what I saw and I couldn't get the image out of my head. It was so clear. I knew it wasn't a dream. I explained it to my parents, but they told me I had a nightmare. They let me sleep in their bed that night. Although uneventful, I still had an image of that face in my head. I couldn't sleep. Ever. It was probably a week from that point of no sleep that I decided to force myself to never sleep at night. Because when I did, I saw its face. Eventually, my parents got concerned for me after they noticed I could barely function during the day. Even in the daytime, whenever I fell asleep, I saw it. They eventually took me to the doctors to find out what was going on. My parents described that this only began happening the day I had the nightmare. The doctor also thought it was just a bad dream when I tried my best to describe it. But I could barely even bring myself to discuss those events. My doctor diagnosed me with something of reoccurring dreams or advanced insomnia. I didn't understand anything back then, so I had no idea what he was talking about with my parents. I was given medication that almost forced me to sleep. Even when I tried to stay awake and that medication completely knocked me out. I slept with my parents for at least two to three months after I took that medication. And even after, when I finally brought myself to sleep in my room on my own, I always kept the closet door shut and locked. My dad installed locks on the closet to make me feel more safe about the closet. And he even installed night lights in my room. In about three more months, my fear of the face went away and I never thought of it again. Until recently. It's been 10 years since that incident to this date. I'm 17 and that memory has just recently resurfaced. But not just the memory, no, that thing's back for me. Ever since I was 16, I worked the late shift at a grocery store across my town. Mostly janitorial duties and locking out the place for closing. Last week from today, when I finally finished my duties, I got in my truck and made my way back home. My town is located in a very forest filled area. In order to get back home, I needed to take a two way road home. The entire road had trees on both sides and the only thing you could see was whatever your headlight shined in front of you. The time was around 10.32 PM and it was really dark. I was alone on the road until an oncoming car passed me. Not that big of a deal really, except that asshole of a driver had his brights on. It temporarily blinded me for a second, and as I couldn't even hold my eyes open, eventually when the car fully passed, I saw something in the corner of my eye. It was in my rearview mirror. I thought it was just blurriness that came from being blinded by those spotlights, but over time, I realized whatever was in the corner of my eye was solid. Eventually, I looked up to see what was in my rearview mirror. It was that face. I looked again in that mirror, and it was still there. The same one from 10 years ago. It was on the bed of my truck, and it was staring at me. 
right through my rearview mirror. I had no explanations. Maybe it was just a hallucination or my mind playing tricks on me, but it was real. It was a real thing in my truck. I spent a good three or four seconds looking at it. And during that time, those three seconds, I was reminded of the fear I felt when I was a seven-year-old boy. Helpless. Scared. Confused. I snapped back to reality with full fear running through my nervous system. I screamed at the top of my lungs looking at that thing and I panicked. I lost control of my vehicle and I immediately made a hard swerve to the left into oncoming traffic. My mind immediately shifted attention to an oncoming car right in front of me. The driver laid down on the horn and I suddenly swerved my car back into the right lane, just barely missing the car and avoiding a full front on collision. I was blinded again by these lights. Being so close, I had to shake my head for a sec. I immediately looked back in my rearview mirror when I regained full vision, but the face was gone. I knew what I saw. It was real. Nothing but some weird, stretched out smiling face. I don't know what it is, or why I just saw it again, but I haven't slept ever since. I haven't left my house, and I have no plans to. I know I have to leave eventually, but when will I get that courage? I have no clue. Every night, my hands tremble when I'm in my dark room. I feel that whenever there is a dark space, that face will crawl out of it, just like it did with my closet. So whenever you go to sleep tonight, just know what might be in your room with you.